There's just nowhere I can go to get good light right now. Oh God. Hey guys, it's Ashley. It is Valentine's Day weekend and I am planning on reading as many romance books as I possibly can. Don't ask me why I decided to do this this weekend. It just seemed to come to me in a fever dream and I was like, yes, this is what I have to do. With that being said, I am going to read as many romance books as I can, whether I have them on my shelf, whether I've rented them from the library, I am going to just shove all of the romance that I can into my brain until I am sick and tired of love and love stories, and then we'll want to read all the fantasy again. I think that sounds like a good plan or a really bad one, but we won't find out until after this is all done. So I have a list of books that I would love to get to, just like a big old pile of rom coms and romances that I have again rented from the library or I have in my collection but what I'm gonna do is post on my Instagram stories and have you guys choose what I read. So I literally just posted my first story. Essentially I just was asking whether I should start easy and do like a graphic novel like Heartstopper or if I should just do a whole ass book and dive in bitch. That's what you're voting on and um, I will update you with the results after I eat dinner and I am not starving. Normally I am not the biggest fan of Valentine's Day. It's just never been a holiday that I enjoy in the slightest. I've never been like a big relationship person so maybe that's what it is but also I love like romance stories and stuff so I'm not really sure what the like line is that I'm walking in between those two things and when it comes to loving Valentine's Day but uh, I've always just not really liked it. So I don't think by doing this that I'm going to like it any more than I already do but um, I'm in the mood and that's all it takes for me to just go head first and do an idea so here we go all right guys so it's 10 30 at night I just finished watching the new episode of WandaVision with my mom we're obsessed with the show I can't wait to see where Marvel goes but now it's time to read so I was just about to check up on what my Instagram poll ended up telling me what I should read so we'll go check on that now. Okay it's been about four hours and 64% of you say that I should start with Heartstopper and that was where I was leaning toward too. I just I, I told you that I was gonna let you pick so I was just kind of crossing my fingers that y'all would pick Heartstopper and you did so we're gonna start with Heartstopper which I have right next to me. I don't know anything about this story other than that it is gay and I'm here for it. Look at how absolutely adorable that looks. I am here for this. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and see how much of this I can get through tonight, and then tomorrow we will see what comes next. So here we go. Okay, it's literally 11.15, 45 minutes later, and I just finished Heartstopper, and it was the cutest freaking thing I have ever read in such a long time. Oh my god. I am obsessed, and I can't believe it just like ended like that. Like it just, it ended with everything that you wanted, and then it slowly fizzled out and became something that you didn't want, and then it just stopped. <laughs> I was just like, excuse me? And the sad thing is that I don't think that any of my local bookstores have the second or third volumes. Which means I have to order them online. Which means they're not gonna get here tomorrow or the next day because today's Friday. And I'm so upset. That happened. Book number one is done and it's not even Saturday yet. So since it's only 11.15, I think I'm going to start the other book that was on my poll on Instagram, which is A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey. There's a lot of words on that that cover oh my god mostly the reason that i'm thinking about starting this now rather than like doing another poll is because heartstopper was like english right like like british and um i'm pretty sure that this book uh she goes to england and she meets cute english british boy and i'm so here for that i think i'm gonna i think i'm just gonna jump in and um, probably get through a lot of this tonight based on how fast i read them because i love love i hate valentine's day but I love love. I just think my head is still reeling. I love this so much. I literally want to reread it right now and just like count it as two books. I'm gonna start crying. I love it. Okay. I'm gonna stop before I go crazy. Oh my god, wait, you guys, update, update, update. I just checked Barnes & Noble online and it says that volume two is in stock at my store. Guess where we're going tomorrow, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Myself. Oh, that's nice. So I came here to come vlog and Maverick decided to join me, but now he's being camera shy. 
Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Good news, I ordered a bed frame, so if I ever do this angle again, you all won't have to stare at my box spring down here that I've had for too long. Okay, so it's officially Saturday the 13th. It is Galentine's Day for all intents and purposes. So happy Galentine's Day, you guys. My hair is wet because I had to take a shower this morning because I was lazy last night. That's, that's how I'm living now. On the to-do list today is to read as much as I can and also go to Barnes & Noble and pick up volume two of Heartstopper, which I did place an order for last night. I don't know if you can see all of these messages, but um, my order is ready for pickup. So I'm really excited for that because that book was so cute. It was just, it, I just, I, I knew it was gonna be cute, but it was so, so freaking cute. I guess I should have done like an intro into these books before I started talking about them, but if you don't know what Heartstopper is about, it's essentially just like a romance following these two boys in school, and it's kind of just like their love story, and it's just the most adorable thing ever. It, I can't. I just, I, I need volume two is what I'm trying to say. And then last night, because it was so late and I just wanted to like start another book immediately, I just went ahead and started A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey, I think is the author's name, um, because it was the other book in my poll and also because it is also set in England and I was just feeling another like English set book after this. So I started this one and I'm almost halfway through it right now. I'm on page uh, 111, which is chapter 12. And it's really, really cute so far. So this one is about a girl named Lila Reyes and she is Cuban American and she grew up in Miami, which is interesting because there are a lot of references to like South Florida sort of things that I like I know those references and I'm like, I may not live in Miami, but I but I get that reference. So yeah, anyway, Miami is her home. She grew up in her Abuela's Bakery and um, after a slew of things, um, bad things happen to her, her family decides to send her off to some family friends in England for the summer to try to cope with her loss and, you know, get back to being herself again. And she's pissed about this, right? Like you know, she just wants to stay at home. She just wants to like grow into the bakery that her abuela left them. And um, now she's being shipped off to England and can't do any of that. So she's pissed, but she ends up meeting this group of friends, specifically this boy named Orion, who runs a tea shop with his family or his father. And um, they're just, it's the cutest thing so far. I want to go to England when this whole pandemic is over. It's all I want. I wanna go abroad and meet a cute English boy and bake a lot of things. Like this book is literally what I want my life to be. So I'm really into this and it's so cute so far. So yeah, those are the things on the to-do list today. Those are the books that I'm reading and I've gotten to so far. Also, I meant to say, um, the aesthetics of these books, like the covers, Wait, let me get the dust jacket. The covers go so well together. This is like the most beautiful sort of color aesthetic I've ever seen in books. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm actually planning on baking a cake because my mom informed me she wanted a cake for Valentine's Day. Again, we don't normally care about Valentine's Day, but she was like, you haven't baked a cake in a while. I want a cake and I was like, Okay, and yeah, it's just gonna be a nice chill weekend eating baked goods and reading lots of cute stories. So I hope you guys are ready to come along on the ride. <laughs> Okay, it's just about 1.30. I was just about to go leave to run to Barnes & Noble to get the second volume of Heartstopper, which is why I changed clothes, but I wanted to update you guys on uh, A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow because I'm now like three quarters of the way done with it. I only have just a little bit left to read. It is the cutest thing. Oh my God. So I'm kind of getting to the part in the book where like, you know how romances, they're always like, you know, so sweet and nice and like everything's building up and it's going exactly the way that you want. And then of course there has to be like this turn of events where like things go downhill before they can go up again, you know? So I'm kind of starting to get to that point and I like don't want it to happen because I just want Lila and Orion to be together and I just, I want that to happen, um, not only for her, but also for me. But that has nothing to do with what I wanted to talk about. So there's a scene in the story that was my favorite scene so far, where after they go out with some friends, they're talking about like, 
what they are to one another, you know, because they're kind of like in this between sort of like, you know, I like you, I like you, we're like sort of touching and like getting closer, but like not really saying any of it out loud. And so they have this conversation where they're trying to like express like what is happening and like they're like, what 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 are we doing here you know and so the whole scene they're kind of just like finishing each other's sentences right he's like first a noise you're my friend you are mine good that's good but how are we the way we yeah all that i mean friends don't no they don't which you know what i so it's like they're finishing each other's sentences and they're not speaking in full sentences and there's a line wait for it i'm trying to turn the page there's a line in the middle of this where lila who's the, obviously the narrator is going we're not completing sentences yet i comprehend pages full and i'm like oh i love that so much i'm here for this very glad that i started to read this and i should probably post on instagram a new poll about what the next book that I'll read is because I'm really almost done with this book. But yeah, this just reaffirms my belief that I need to go to London and find a cute British boy. So, you know, hopefully that's in my future. Romeo, take me somewhere we can be alone. Not sure if you can hear the air conditioning blasting in this clip, but it's Florida and it's hot. So you're going to have to deal with that. I just realized I've bought like four books over the past three days, which is not that is not how I have been the past few years. I have been very frugal with my book buying, but I just couldn't help myself. So I went into Barnes and Noble, I picked up my in-store pickup for Heartstopper Volume 2, which I'm just like wanting to read right now in this parking lot, but I won't, I will save it. And like I said, they don't have Volume 3 in stock at my Barnes and Noble, so I just have to order it online. And then because Barnes and Noble had given out like a 20% off coupon to uh, people who like had an account with them or whatever, I used mine on Heartstopper when I bought it last night. But this morning I got up and I was like, you know what, I really wanna buy another book. So I logged into my mom's email in the parking lot of Barnes and Noble right here. And I, um, I stole her coupon from her, so sorry mom. But I ended up buying a physical copy of Get life Chloe Brown because so many of you guys on Instagram were telling me that I need to read this book or like when I asked you for recommendations you gave me the recommendation of this book so I have to read it at some point this weekend or this week or whatever but yeah I'm reading it it's happening it's in my hands we're we're gonna do this now I just have to run to the grocery store real quick get a couple things and then go home and keep reading and hopefully finish my book Yay! <laughs> I love love! Okay, you guys, it is 5.35 and I just finished book number two of the weekend, A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. This book was so adorable. I want an Orion of my own, please. I say as if I'm not the most antisocial person in the world. No, but for real, everything about that book was so, so cute. Like not just the romance, but also just like Lila and like her love of baking and cooking. I can totally like understand that, even though I don't have like a family history of it, like she does with her Cuban roots and everything, but like still. Still, I get the love of baking and cooking. I, I just love how passionate that she was about it and how much she loved her, I don't know, history with it and like her family's history with it and just really wanted to like honor them through it in a way. She was just so, I loved her. And I especially loved Orion if that was not clear enough. I did post an Instagram story before I went and finished that book about what book I should read next. And I included uh, You Should See Me in a Crown, Love and Gelato, or Get a Life Chloe Brown in the poll. So uh, I will not look at that yet because I have to go make dinner because it's uh, nearing evening time. You can tell that the light is getting a little darker in here. Um, so I won't look at that just yet. I'll wait until I start reading to look at the results. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. There was a butt there. There was a butt and I can't remember where I was going. Now I remember, um, but I'm definitely gonna be reading Heartstopper Volume 2 tonight, tomorrow, at some point. Honestly, might reread the first one. I mean, it doesn't take very long, so totally possible totally could happen, you know? All right, you guys, I am fed, I am in bed, and I am ready to go. Anyway, let's see what the results were from my poll that I made earlier. How do I see the results? The winner of this poll is Get a Life Chloe Brown with more than almost double the votes of the other ones. So uh, I guess it was a good thing that I bought this today because we're gonna read it. Granted, I did have it on ebook on hold at my library before I bothered to pick it up, so I would have been able to read it no matter what.
but now that I have the physical copy, maybe I'll fly through it so fast so fast but yeah as for the story i don't know anything about it other than that it's a romance i know that the author is british uh which seems to be a trend in this vlog so that's fun and other than that i know that this book is so widely loved and beloved and hyped the past few months or the past year i feel like this book has been so hyped as well as the other talia hibbert books of the brown sister series is that what it's called so beyond hyped like the hype that i was hearing for red white and royal blue by casey mckinston like that's what i'm hearing for this so I'm just anticipating that I'm gonna love it right off the bat. Like I'm just, I'm thinking that I'm gonna like, like top tier level love this book. And if I'm wrong, I'm gonna be sad, but I just don't think I'm wrong. So you guys picked it. I will be reading Get a Life Chloe Brown and we will try to get through as much as we can tonight because I just want to get this book into my head. I want to, I want to, read this book. I was gonna say eat this book, but that doesn't sound right. Oh wait, I just thought about something. Isn't this like a bad boy sort of story where like she, there's a re Redford Red Morgan is a handyman with tattoos, a motorcycle, and more sex appeal than 10,000 Hollywood heartthrobs. I think this is sounding like a bad boy story because I'm pretty sure, no, this is a fake dating. Fake dating, right? Fake, fake dating. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so chaotic right now um, because I'm pretty sure the Danny Brown story is enemies to lovers. No, wait, I think I saw, I actually think I saw Reagan from Peru's Project post on her Instagram today a reel that was like enemies to lovers romance and this was on it. So maybe this is enemies to lovers. Maybe it's fake dating. Maybe it's none of these things and I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. Good thing we'll find out. All right, you guys, now you're getting Ashley after hours because my face has been scrubbed clean and I'm ready for bed. It's technically only 11, but I'm trying to decide what I wanna do right now. I am about halfway done with Get a Life Chloe Brown and it's so good so far. I can totally get why people absolutely love this book. It's really, really good, but I will remind everyone that it is an adult romance book. So um, if you, I don't know, don't want to read explicit scenes, maybe don't pick it up, just like with other adult romances, but I mean, yeah, I love it. <laughs> no, just like the, the chemistry between Chloe and Red is just so good. It like, I don't want to sound like super cliche when I say this, but it literally just like hops off the page and you're just like, oh, they work well together. So I love seeing the representation of chronic pain. Chloe has fibromyalgia and chronic pain um, due to the pneumonia that she had gotten before and then recovered from but didn't recover fully and then developed fibromyalgia. If I got that backstory right, I, I might be a little wrong in the details, but yeah, I do enjoy seeing that representation in the book and just like Red as a character, as I just, I love him. I love him so much. I love how much he cares and how like, like just, I, I, I have no words. But suffice to say, I am getting a bit like laggy when it comes to reading like full on books like that, like finishing A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow and then jumping right in to get a life Chloe Brown. I'm like feeling a little bent, <laughs> like my energy is gone. So um, I think I'm gonna pick up Heartstopper volume two to get myself through this and then maybe just take a break for the rest of the night to be honest with you like I would really love to keep reading but sometimes you just you need a break from the words so I think that's what I might do also I just realized through all of this I look sunburnt right now but it's just because I washed my face <laughs> here's a reminder wash your face don't sleep with your makeup on everyone anyway I'm getting off track I'm gonna read hard supper volume 2 and I'll be back Happy Valentine's Day! So I don't have much on the agenda to do today other than obviously read as much as I can and also bake a cake because my mom wants a cake. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna go and take the butter out of the fridge so it can soften up and then I'm gonna start reading. I did post another poll on my Instagram stories just a couple minutes ago this morning. I just want a bit of a break from Get a Life Chloe Brown, not because I'm not liking it because I am loving it, but just because I want a break. I might just start a book now, or maybe I'll just keep reading Chloe Brown for now until you guys pick a book for me. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go do that 
I'm gonna make that decision and then I'll get back to you. I feel like I've done nothing all day, but I definitely have. So because I wanted to take a break from Get a Life, Chloe Brown, I actually started a different book, but it's an ebook, but then my Kindle was dead. So I had to start reading it on the Kindle app on my phone. But long story short, I started Serious Moonlight by somebody. I don't remember the author's name. Wait for it. I can get the author's name. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Jen Bennett. I didn't know anything about this book other than that the main character is named Birdie and that she's really into mysteries and like detective work and mystery novels, which kind of reminded me of Truly Devious with Stevie Bell, like Stevie, Birdie, detective, mystery, murder mystery, that kind of thing. So it was like kind of similar in that vein. And it's really, really cute so far. Um, I really like how the book opens because I was not expecting the first scene to be like, Basically, the main character, Birdie, was talking to her aunt, who's not really her aunt, it was like her mother's best friend, um, about this guy that she had met at the uh, diner that they go to like a month before and then she like did something that day that she was just like not super like crazy about or was still kind of like conflicted over and so it was just like it started off really quickly and then within like the second chapter she saw him again and then everything just sort of kept going so it's very a, like a fast-paced contemporary romance story which I really enjoy because I am tired of the books that take forever to start. So when it comes to fantasy I'm okay with it having a slow build up but when it comes to contemporary or romance I feel like it should just be like bam 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 give me what I want. What I want to do now is look at the poll on Instagram. Basically what I did was I took three recommendations that people had given. So Frankly in Love by David Yoon, Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett apparently. I picked two Jen Bennett books somehow um, and then The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper and I have them all like, uh, it's hard to see that, but I have them all like in a row. Most people picked number two. <laughs> and number two is, I'm pretty sure Alex approximately. <laughs> so guess who's gonna be reading two Jen Bennett books at the same time? So I think now I'm going to take a break, see if my butter has softened enough so I can start baking and then come back and try to decide what I'm going to do. Am I gonna continue with Get a Life, Chloe Brown, am I going to continue with Serious Moonlight? Am I going to start Alex Approximately? Uh, I have less than half a day left. I don't know what I'm doing right now starting all of these books, but we're here. So we're just going to do it. Okay, so after some hopefully successful baking and a lot of other things, I'm back in my usual spot. So it's currently 5.45 and I don't think I'm going to be able to do everything that I wanted to. I'm right now uh, 226 pages into Get a Life Chloe Brown and um, things just got hot and heavy first of all I will say but the secondly it's so good it's I just I love red with all my heart so I'm just really excited to continue to read it and see where it goes. As for Serious Moonlight, I haven't made any progress on it since earlier this morning. I'm about like 85 pages in, I wanna say. And then I know, I know I was supposed to start Alex approximately because of the poll that I did on Instagram, but I just don't even think that I'm gonna be able to finish these books, let alone another one. So I'm just gonna see where I get tonight. And worst comes to worst, if this vlog runs a little bit into tomorrow, then so be it. But yeah, I'm just, I'm doing what I feel capable of, you know? If, if I have to stay up all night tonight to finish my books, I will. Oh my god, you guys. Okay, first of all, if you can hear the really loud air conditioning coming from over there, just ignore it. It's really loud for some reason right now. But secondly, oh my god, I just finished this book and I... <laughs> I'm just a big pile of mush right now because I loved it so much. I loved Chloe, okay? I, I loved her. I loved her character. I loved her development through the story. I loved how funny she was and how just all around amazing she was, but, but, Red's chapters though. I love this book. I love I love love. So it's now nearing 10 o'clock and my camera is flashing its warning battery dying signal at me. So 
I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. I don't know. I feel like I should keep reading my other book and try to finish as much as I can by the end of tonight. But at the same time, I like kind of don't want to read anymore. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I've like burnt myself out from reading, which is not what I wanted to happen this weekend. But at the same time, I'm really happy that I read so many books. I'll figure it out and get back to you after I charge my camera. It might not be till tomorrow but you'll see me at some point soon. <laughs> I'm waiting for my oven to preheat right now, so I figured I would film the last clip of this vlog, but today is officially Monday. It is the end of Valentine's Day weekend, and I'm here to give you my little wrap up. Um, clearly I took a shower again, so please ignore that. So I had a lot of fun this weekend reading all of those romance books, but I definitely feel kind of burnt out when it comes to romance. I kind of want to like set the books aside for a little bit and maybe focus on like writing and other things so that I can, you know, get that sort of burnt out feeling out of my system but in addition i am looking forward to reading some more fantasy books soon so hopefully that just like kick-started my fantasy driven year i'm hoping <laughs> this morning i did wake up and i finished serious moonlight last night i was up until like 1 a.m and i had gotten about 75 percent of the way through the book and i was like i'll just finish the rest tomorrow and i did it was a really cute book it was uh, not what I was expecting, but it was really cute by the end of it. In case I forgot to mention this when I first talked about this book, Serious Moonlight is a romance, obviously, following Birdie and Daniel. Birdie is this girl who is obsessed with crime and mystery novels, and Daniel is a boy who um, likes magic, like street magic, that kind of thing. He likes magician sort of stuff. Something that I liked about this story is we got characters who not only had like very different like hobbies and interests than you normally see, but also they had like different I don't want to say like medical conditions, but like they really did, like from what you would normally see in a YA romance, which I really appreciated for like the diversity aspect of it. So Birdie's family has a history of narcolepsy, but she didn't want to admit that to herself that she might have that as well. So throughout the book, you see her struggling to not really come to terms with it, but to like accept it and be like, yes, I have this thing that is affecting my daily life and I should probably get help, right? And then Daniel actually had hearing loss in one of his ears from like a magic stunt gone wrong so it was it was really nice to see like a different I don't know like like different people but yeah so the story was really really cute and I'm really glad that I ended up reading it and although I did not get to Alex approximately which was the last book that you guys had picked for me in that poll I will be getting to it hopefully soon because I still have like literally eight books on loan from my library so I should probably get to those <laughs> I say after I just said I was burnt out from romance books you know how it is <laughs> but yeah so five books if you count the two graphic novels Heartstopper volume one and two that I read which I do so five books I think that's pretty good for a single weekend anyway though I had a really great time doing this I hope you guys enjoyed watching this vlog and if you would like to see me do more little weekend reading vlogs let me know I'm definitely gonna do more in the future I just I wanted a question to ask you guys <laughs> do you love love as well let me know but yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this vlog now so i can start editing it so i think that's gonna be it if you want to follow me on any of my socials all my handles are in the description below thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you later bye